Welcome to another production of Park TV 16 Sports. We are on location from the campus of the Benilde St. Margaret's Red Knights, and we are going to be bringing you Metro West Boys Lacrosse, and we have a rivalry here tonight. St. Louis Park comes in here with an Owen Run record, taking on perennial power, Benilde St. Margaret's, and we are already underway, Benilde in white with red trim going from right to left, uh, St. Louis Park in dark and their customary orange numbers on defense. And we are hoping for a good match tonight just based on the crosstown rivalry, but Benilde has a decided uh, advantage with talent and history and experience. And we're underway here and right away up top there, number 18, you'll remember him from last year, Shea Kenny Leonhart, a captain senior this year and he is on the top on the offense, and there's a big, hard shot there taken by number five for Benilde. That's Matt Doden, a sophomore, and the ball goes out of bounds, but the Red Knights will retain possession just underway here in the first few minutes of the first quarter early in the season. Chilly night here, but otherwise a pleasant night. Partly sunny skies, very little wind as Leonhardt loses control of that ball, but the Orioles not playing very aggressive defense as was the case when we were there watching them uh, two nights ago in their loss in their first home effort. Now ball loose in the corner, picked up there by number 12 for Benilde. That's Jackson Lachau, he's also a sophomore. Now a shot from the right side and a goal. Jack Van Overbeek, junior captain, attacker, strikes first from the right slot. And boy, did he have some whip action on that attempt. And he blew it by the goaltender. There it is, just a full, boy, you couldn't even see the ball on slow motion replay. There he is, Jack Van Overbeck, senior. Remember him from last year as well. Nilt St. Margaret's ranked number two in the state, and as they should be, the last two years, they have made it to the state championship match only to lose it. They've been runner-ups the last two years. I'm sure this year their only goal is to win that state tournament after almost getting it two years in a row. And this is the beginning of their season-long campaign taking on the Orioles, and they're up one to nothing, and they have possession following the face-off. And they look right at home here. Taking their time, being patient. There's Van Overbeck, who just got the first goal. Gets it back up to Leonhardt. Now he takes a pass and tries to get it below, and he gets it to number three right in front of the goalie. Calum stores, and he deposits it back in the net for a 2-0 lead for Benilde. And here's the replay. There's Leonhardt, and it looks like he was gonna shoot it, but there wasn't enough pace on it, and he gets it to Stores, who does a nice fake job on the Benilde goalie, Noah Hauser. And so far, the Red Knights are two for two on shots, and two for two on those shots scoring. So two nothing here with 10.02 to go in the first quarter, and we'll go back to the center circle. See if the Orioles can get their first possession of the night, but it won't happen right there as Benilde wins their third face-off of the match. This is their third offensive possession, and they are back in business. And on the far side, that is Van Overbeck, and he'll play catch with Stores, who just got the last goal. Van Overbeck, they so far are paying more attention to that right side with Van Overbeck, but now the ball comes around to the near side. Number five in the slot, that's Matt Dowden. Dowden now up top, that's to number eight. Number eight is Logan Gelling, a junior, running the show and he was gonna take a shot there, gets it over to Van Overbeck. Now over to the left side, little spin move there by Dowden. Dowden plays catch with Stores and back and forth they go. Looks like Dowden tries to make a move and he overshoots Van Overbeck and that's out of bounds and a turnover, unforced air, first one on Benilde. And now the Orioles will go on offense for the first time this evening. Last Tuesday, their main player, he scored a hat trick, is number 12, Parker Bernildson, along with Leo Benson. They're the two best players on the Orioles team, at least what I saw on Tuesday offensively, and if they're gonna get anything going, look to those two guys, and now there's an unforced air turnover on the Orioles. 
Benil now on offense. That's number 21 with it. That's Pepe Smith, a junior. Now Van Overbeck on the far side. Now coming on to the field of play is Gelling. He'll man the point position. And now a big shot there taken by Dowden. But he just sails it over the crossbar by just a little bit. Goes out of bounds, but Benilde will retain possession and we're back underway with Van Overbeck on the far side. Fakes a shot, now Gelling, Van Overbeck, and now he takes a shot. Nice save by Noah Hauser with the foot it looked like, or maybe with his racket net there, his stick. Rebound goes to Benilde, now behind, stores. Oh, he tried to get a short pass in there, tried to tuck it into Johnny Schiefert, the sophomore, but those are hard passes to execute at such short distances. And now a turnover, and now the Orioles trying to get across midfield for the first time offensively. That pass goes errant, and it's picked up by number 21, Pepe Smith. Now Smith off to the races on the far side, and oh, he outruns the Oriole defender. He comes right in, a pass behind the net, bounces in front of Storrs, he recaptures it. Now back out to Van Overbeck. Substitution now, Gelling comes in. He seems to always be in there when they get to the offensive side. Gelling over to Van Overbeck now. Behind the net to Stores, Stores to Dowden. Around the horn they go, Dowden fakes inside. Trying to get position is Johnny Sheaford inside number 11. And there's another goal, just like that. Those balls go fast. This time number eight, Logan Gelling gets the goal. There's the fake up top there to the point, Gelling, and he just takes the shot from about 25 yards away, or 20 anyway, and gets it down low where Hauser has a hard time handling it, and just like that, it's three to nothing here, first quarter. I'm Robert Christensen, glad you're along with us here. And there's Logan Gelling's shot, and yeah, he got it low, which is the Achilles heel for any goaltender when it comes to lacrosse. Want to shoot it at their feet, makes it very difficult to make those saves. And now right off the face off, a breakaway in the middle to the right side of Van Overbeck and Benild is going for four here. Leonhart now to Dowden, back to Shea Leonhart. Substitutions now, he'll wait for a couple players to come in for Benild. And incoming there was number 12, Jackson Lachau. Now Van Overbeck with it. Shea Kinney Leonhardt, now Dowden takes a shot and scores it. Looked like it went right in the five hole on Noah Hauser and poor Noah Hauser is just getting bombarded here early on. We're barely halfway through, look at that shot, he just sneaks it in there between the near post and his body. There's all kinds of pace as we watch Dowden leave. Here it is, they just went around the horn, nothing fancy. Orioles not moving very well on defense, a little slow to get over on that pass, and there it was. Boy, he threaded the needle. That was beautiful shot there by our camera crew. And now we have a timeout. 4 nothing, 7.01 to go. Coach Buckley for the Orioles, gonna talk it over. Last, uh, the night before last on Tuesday over at St. Louis Park High School, St. Louis Park called a lot of timeouts. I think they used their full complement of them and we accredited it to their first match. A lot of jitters, inexperience out there, but he's got to settle his team down. They got to figure out a way to just pass the ball, get the ball down the field and try to get some sort of offense. The poor goalie for Benilde, he hasn't seen anything of that ball. The whole match has been on the defensive side of the Orioles so far. I was reading in the Star Tribune last Friday, they had a little expose on the upcoming season statewide and they did rank the top five lacrosse teams and number one coming into the season is Minnetonka and they had Benilde St. Margaret's number two, followed by Prior Lake, Matamidi and then Stillwater. And getting special mention as uh, players to watch in the field, a couple of Benilde St. Margaret's, uh, Jack Wrigley, Benilde St. Margaret's on defense and Tucker Turton of Benilde St. Margaret's and we haven't called either of their names tonight. But really? 
I was just informed by a Benilde insider that Wrigley uh, transferred schools to an East Coast school. Probably a lacrosse school, I'm imagining, that specializes in that. So uh, the Star Tribune information was a little off there, but we do have Tucker Turton. He is a starter, and Benilde now following the goal, making it 4 nothing and a face. Oh, and a trip. And we do have a whistle. It was a push. And it looks like Benilde's going to retain possession. Let's see here. Looks like he tripped over a stick. All right, well, Benilde has it, and uh, nobody down on one knee for the Orioles, so just a stoppage, and now possession to Benilde, and they're trying to add to their 4 nothing lead here. So nice execution of the fundamentals here. Benilde just uh, really passing the ball well. That's one of the things the Orioles really struggled with, I thought, uh, the other night, was just basic passing the ball. Hard to move the ball down the field if you can't hit passes. And that shot by Over Van Overbeck goes off the post or the crossbar. In fact, it was so much pace on it, the goal looked like it shook, unless that was Hauser backing into it right there off the crossbar. And you can see it shake there. Tells you how hard these guys can whip that ball. I would not want to get hit by one. I'm sure it hurts. And there's a big shot, and Hauser right in perfect position makes the save. And again, representation of how hard those balls are shot. The ricochet comes all the way down the length of the field of nearly 100 yards. Picked up by Benilde. And what a beautiful pass across. Picked up by the long stick. Number two, Seamus Foley. Now Foley into the offensive zone. They'll pull up and do some substitutions. Wait for their teammates. Shea, Kenny, Leonhardt coming in there. And he'll pick up the ball. Beautiful sunset coming in here. Some long shadows on this early spring evening in St. Louis Park. Glad you're with us as Benilde is off to a commanding lead and pass. Now, look at they they're very good with their passes. Just always, and there's another shot by Dowden, and he goes low and bounces it right past Hauser. And it's 5 0, just like that. Number five, fifth goal for number five. There it is. Bang. Look at Hauser. He's just like. God help me, Lord. Nice shot there by Dowden. I think that's his second goal of the evening. There's another look at it. Just look at Hauser. Oh, barely sees it until it's in the back of the net. He's a good goalie though. He had some really nice saves the other night, but this is uh, too much firepower at this point. He needs his teammates to help him out, get possession of the ball. All right, back to the center circle, and boy, just steals it away from the Orioles, and right in, and Dowden takes another shot. Just misses wide left. Those goalies, they don't wear really that much padding for how hard those balls are coming at them. I think Mr. Hauser's gonna wish he had some pads this evening. Okay, Benilde back on offense, following that last shot, and here's Dowden, let's see if he comes back looking for the hat trick. Gelling now takes his shot and scores it. Goal number six, 4.49 to go. I don't know, is there a mercy rule in the high school lacrosse league or is it running time? Something like that maybe. Might be a little early to be talking about that, but maybe not. Look at that nice shot there by Gelling. Poor Orioles have not had the ball across midfield. Not even close as we look at another goal by Gelling. And you can see that's the name of the game is to bounce that ball about a foot to a yard. And it's really hard to time it. And here's another face off. And here we go. Oh, Dowden. Nice defense by the Orioles that time. Stopping Dowden from taking the shot, but not stopping Van Overbeck. And his shot is stopped by Hauser. Nice job by him hanging in there, showing great resiliency in the barrage of goals. Okay, now the Orioles have possession in their own end, looking to cross midfield with possession. And that ball goes out of bounds, unable to connect on just basic passes, haunting the Orioles once again. And that's another unforced error and a turnover. And now Benilde's back on offense again, up 6 nothing here. Yelling now to Van Overbeck. He'll wait for the substitution. That is number 21 who comes in and out in these situations. Pepe Smith 
And now Dowden again on the near side. The right hand fakes the shot. Oh, and his pass goes to Van Overbeck on the bounce. And it might have been, the sun might have been in Van Overbeck's eyes. I think over on that part of the field, it's going to be very difficult to take passes out of the sun at this point. May have gotten in Van Overbeck. The sun may have distracted his vision there. So now Storrs in the back behind the net. Gets it back out to Dowden. Dowden fakes a shot. Now Gelling. Is it Van Overbeck's time? Oh, he almost lost that one too. I bet that son is having some sort of role in that right now. Now Gelling. Orioles content just to kind of play a passive defense. Now in the middle. And good defense that time, spinning him out there. That was Pepe Smith looking for a shot as they try to penetrate that. I, for no other reason, I call it a zone defense, really is what it is. Much like basketball, 2-3 zone. Here's, oh, shot. Quick move by Dowden, and he scores it. That was a great move. The quickness of Matt Dowden fakes out the defender, creates some space. He takes a couple steps and, again, bounce, bounces it past the goalie. Noah Hauser, here's the replay. So watch the move right. No, nope, that's right before. Now the pass comes back. And the fake right there creates the space that allows him to score the goal right there. Hauser had no chance. 7 0, 250 due to go. Quarter number one. We're at the campus of Benilt St. Margaret's. Holy Thursday and the Catholic religion, which is what kind of school Benilt is their Easter weekend off to a good start if this score continues. And now we have an infraction on Benilde and that's gonna give the Orioles their first possession in Benilde zone. Let's see if they can take advantage of it. As now the ball in the offense is numbers 27, Skylar Glover for the Orioles. His pass uh, does connect on the bounce there to number 20. That is O'Gara, or excuse me, that's number 29, Swanson. And now it is another turnover. That didn't take long. Picked up by number seven. That was Nylander. Now into the offensive zone and Dowden shot. Blocked by Hauser. Rebound in front, but Hauser scoops it up. Nice goal save there by Hauser for St. Louis Park. And now they'll try to get the ball up the field here. Hauser may take it on his own. He lowers the shoulder. Obviously some frustration there on his part. You can't say I blame him. And that drew a whistle. And the infraction goes against Benilde, or who are they giving the ball to? Yeah, they're gonna give it to the Orioles and they're gonna give him some yardage as well. All the way to midfield, actually. So that's the penalty, they give him field position and now this is the second time the Orioles have the ball in the Benilde defensive zone and he gets shoved away there. Number 28, Tucker Turrenton, the captain. Easily shredded the ball away, and oh, the return pass intended for number two Foley. That would have been a nice play if they connected on that. Good attempt, ball goes out of bounds. Orioles have possession. If we could get that replay at some point, it'd be see, uh, fun to see how close that was, if possible. That was the old give and go play by T Foley. Gets it over the right side, I think that was to Van Overbeck as the Orioles now put it back into play. Coming up on a minute and a half to go here, quarter number one. That's number 21 with it for St. Louis Park, Justin Tomzak, and now he turns it over. My goodness. And Van Overbeck has it for Benilde. He gets it over to Foley, or no, excuse me, that's number 12, not number two. 12 is Jackson Lachau. And now number four, that's Patty Burns, Pete with two Ds, Patty Burns, that's an Irish name. If I ever heard one, now on the far side, number 23, San Siegel Horn. He's a junior attacker. And so good to see them doing some substitutions, getting some experience to the whole team, especially with a 7 nothing lead only in the first. And there's Dowden with a shot, and he just blows it by at rib cage height to the left inside the post. Beats Hauser, 53.6 seconds, and that's the third goal for that man right there, Matt Dowden. Takes the pass from Stewart. No, that was from Van Overbeck, and there it goes. Blows it by him. My goodness, the pace on Dowden shot. Something to behold, and it's 8 nothing. Let's see if Benil can get a ninth goal here. 
might be some kind of record, eight goals in a quarter. All right, back to the center circle. Taking the draw for Benild is number 24, Henry Croft. Or no, that was Jack Benutsky, of course. He's a captain and he's their face-off specialist and he runs off. That's right, Benutsky from last year, I remember him. He's gonna be a critical part of their success this year, winning face-offs. You gotta win them if you're gonna win in this league. Okay, now that's Shea Kenny Leonhart. Another great name on the Benil team. Leonhart now, nice touch pass in the middle intended there for number 23, Siegel Horn, and his shot misses the net, but goes right back to Leonhart, and this time he scores it on his own. Shoulder length, sh shoulder height shot, and blows it by Hauser, and it's nine nothing now with 18.3 seconds. Not in the fourth quarter, in the first quarter. Look at that shot, great camera angle, great lighting out there right now with the sun setting in the west behind the grandstand here. Shea Kinney Leonhart trots off the field. Boy, Benilde St. Margaret's looks like they're a well-oiled machine here early on. Start to see the shadows come in. Well, probably all oh, the lights are on here already. So they're anticipating darkness before this match is over. And there's Benutsky, and he runs right down. One of these days, he's gonna take a shot on his own. I think he's deserved one. And there's a shot by Van Overbeck, and it's 10 nothing, with 10.5 seconds to go, quarter number one. My goodness, we're on a 40 to nothing pace here. Scoring for the Rednecks, number one, Jack Van Overbeck. There he is, and there's Benutsky. He is something, winning all those face-offs. Look at that knee brace he's got. But if I'm Jack, next time he earned that shot, he should take that shot with a 10-0 lead, of course. All right, back to the faceoff. He might have a chance right here. Can they make it to 11 with 10 seconds to go? And Benutsky comes away with it, not as cleanly, makes the fake. He's got to take the shot. No, he gives it up to Storrs, and he scores it with 2.8 seconds. They let the clock run there. It's 11-0, folks. Oh. I wonder if they'll go to running time. There he is, your goal scorer of the minute. That's three goals in the last 53 seconds of the first quarter, folks. It's 11 nothing. And now in the take the face off, they've given Jack Budnitsky, I think he's earned his keep tonight. Now comes in Cooper Gay. And now both teams are heading to their respective benches. And it's, oh, are we gonna have a stick challenge here? I see the referee took the stick from Shea Kenny Leonhardt. They did this in the Oriole game on Tuesday and they're gonna, I don't know if there's a stick challenge or if this comes from a coach or if it comes from the ref, but that's what they're doing. Standard. Yep, I see that. So I've been informed by people that know lacrosse better than I do that they do this randomly. So they're checking a St. Louis Park stick, the long stick as we look at the uh, Benilde bench. Not sure what they're looking for, where the possible cheating angles can be. I suppose the length or the weight, the material that it's made of. Marking something down, uh, let's see. And they're giving the stick now back to Leonhardt. So as we watch uh, airplane over the clear blue sky. We're getting some nice weather into the Twin Cities here coming up this weekend. Haven't seen uh, blue skies around here for a few days or even a week. Nice shot there, okay. So with 1.7 seconds left, they decide to check the sticks like they couldn't do it maybe during the break between the first quarter and the second quarter. A couple Canadian geese flying right over. My goodness, look at that. All right, let's go here. 1.7 seconds to the end of the quarter. Yep, taking the face off is Cooper Gay instead of Benutsky. I think they can give him the rest of the night off. He's earned his keep. All right, lots of talk out there. 
see if Cooper Gay can keep the Bayoff playoff train going here. And he wins it, and that's your whistle, and that concludes the first quarter. It's 11-0, come back for quarter number two. Get on top of it before they do. Every 24 minutes, tipped furniture or a falling TV sends an injured child to the emergency room. Preventing tip-over incidents is easy, inexpensive, and only takes five minutes. Learn how to secure your furniture and TVs to protect children at anchorit.gov. Welcome back to Park TV 16 Sports on location. Tonight we are broadcasting boys varsity lacrosse from Benilde St. Margaret's. And we are about to begin quarter number two. St. Louis Park is, has their work cut out. They gave up 11 goals in quarter number one. And we are going to begin quarter number two. Benilde in white, Orioles in dark uniforms. They'll be going right to left this quarter. And St. Louis Park, I wish I could say some more positive things about their team. They didn't even get a shot on goal. And they barely possessed the ball the whole quarter. And when that happens, you find yourself down 11 nothing, and especially when you're playing arguably the best team in the state. And now we've got some flags that go up, and Benild is going to get a man advantage here as the Orioles do strip the ball, and that draws a whistle. There's a penalty, flags all over the place. And let's see, it looks like number 12 for St. Louis Park is going to get the, oh, he's going to take a knee. That's Parker Bernildson. He had a hat trick the other night, so their most prolific score is going on the knee. So now Benilde has a man advantage for at least a minute. It could have been a two minute. I didn't hear what it was, but for probably 30 seconds or a minute, Benilde has a man advantage like they really need it. All right, here they go. Benutsky now playing regular offense. He's normally their playoff or face-off specialist. Good to see him getting some experience in the offense there. I expect Benil would be doing a lot of substituting as he go forward here to get all the players some experience. And Benutsky tried to take the shot, but he held up and he lost it. And the ball almost found its way to the net anyway. That would have been just bad luck on top of bad luck for the Orioles. Pass in middle, a little high, but she. Leonhardt tries to uh, push the ball or sweep it over to Dowd and still loose on the far side and then we got a whistle, goes out of bounds and Benilde will retain possession. Interesting sequence of events there with the ball and you can see the long shadows really coming into play there. All right, Shea Kenny Leonhardt has it up top at about the 30. He'll come in looking to shoot now to the near side to Jack Van Overbeck. He has two goals tonight. Now Stores, he has two goals tonight behind the net to the far side to Matt Dowden. He has three goals tonight. Shea Leonhardt, here he comes. He's going to take a shot. He scores. Hauser went down to one knee or almost to one knee. And I wonder if the sun wasn't affecting his vision there either because you can see it's right there. But there he is, Shea Kenny Leonhardt with the fake comes right in and just leans into that shot. Bang, back of the net. Clean shot there as he comes off. Feeling very good. I think that might have been his third goal tonight. So early in quarter number two, I'm Robert Christensen, glad you're with us. If you like lacrosse, you're watching a clinic being put on here by the Red Knights. Their goal is a state championship coming in runner-up the last two consecutive years. This is serious business, as it should be for the Red Knights, and they are not showing any mercy towards the St. Louis Park Orioles as number seven now takes that face-off following the goal. That's Drew Nylander. He runs off the sophomore. Nice job getting possession following the goal, and now Shea Leonhardt gets it to the near side, Van Overbeck, and they are again on offense. Guess one good spot for the Orioles. They get to work on their defensive skills here, try to improve them, find ways to stop this very powerful Benilde team. That's number 12 now with it, Leishow. 
And four is Burns. Burns now. He's a sophomore. To the far side. That's number 12. Leishow. Leishow now takes the shot and scores it off the one bouncer past Noah Hauser. Goal number 13. 9.34 to go here, folks. And here is the replay out of the sun. And Lysho says, it's my turn. Bang, goal. Bounces it right over the head of Noah Hauser. And that is one discouraged looking guy out there. It's nothing he can do. I wonder if they'll substitute him out of there just to give another goalie some experience. Not sure it would be a good one, but uh, if you're Hauser, it's gonna get a little old there taking that barrage of shots, I would think. That's number seven in doing the face-off. That's Nylander. He won it last time, and he wins it again this time. Ball ended up in the basket of Johnny Schiefert, and he gives it to Van Overbeck. And Van Overbeck now will start off the offense. He gets it behind the net to Kalen Stores. Stores now. And Dowden takes a shot and scores. It's like shooting goldfish in a barrel is what this is like. It is now 14 to nothing, and we have a full nine minutes to go in this half, and a whole second half. We're gonna see if there's a scoring record here. The highest that anyone around here has told me is 23 goals, and we're already at 14 here. Here's that replay, very cool images with the shade and the light in between. And now back to the face-off, and this time taking it, I think I saw number 13 maybe for Benil. No, it's number 20, I think, K Cooper Gay. And it is Cooper Gay, and he wins the face-off. They won every face-off. He goes down and he trips, and the ball comes out of his basket. Now the Orioles try to get into the front offensive zone, but coming out of nets is number 16, Jack Keller, the junior goaltender, first time calling his, he's happy to get some action of any kind and he is taking advantage of it, getting way out of the net, passing it near side here to number two, Seamus Foley, and he brings it down the center. To the right side, to the middle, and Dowden with the shot and another goal. He's gotta have five tonight. And that makes it 15 to nothing, 8.35 to go. Whew. Look at this passing, what a clinic the Red Knights are putting on. Wow. Bang, bang, play, goal. Very efficient. That all started with the goaltender. If you remember, that was actually a great sequence when I think back to that last goal, because the goaltender came out, scooped it up, wheeled around in the far corner, then a nice pass all the way across midfield to Foley and then he ran it across midfield, passed to the right side to number 23 Siegel Horn who then found Dowden coming, cutting across the middle who put it in the back of the net for the 15th goal and now they win another face off. Cooper Gage runs off after winning it. Now number 21, Pepe Smith has it. Smith now to the left side. That is number eight, Logan Gelling. And now behind the net to Stewers to Dowden to Gelling. Gelling, is it his turn? Now 23, newly in the match at Siegel Horn. Stores, and boy, they move that ball well. Right around the horn, real quick, wasting no time. Back and forth, just great execution there. Just this passing alone would be a great training reel, I think, for lacrosse players. Just the way they move it around. And there, a little miscue. Goes off Gelling's basket, and now a turnover, and the Orioles have possession. I think they don't know who's going to do what with it. Now coming over to get it for the Orioles, number 10, Tony Stadler. And he'll pass it in, and he does successfully get it to Skylar Glover. Glover, the little spin move, and drew a whistle right at the 50-yard line, and timeout by the Orioles. Coach Eric Buckley calling timeout down 15 to nothing. Not quite sure what he needs to talk to him about, especially when they just got possession and had a little momentum. They call a timeout, kind of confusing to me. 
But it is a timeout. That's the second one of the half, so he can't call any more timeouts this half. I think they get two in the second half. Benilde, I think, is is it three? Okay, yeah, that makes more sense, doesn't it? The other night, someone informed me it was two, but it's two or three. So he's used two, if I'm not mistaken. I think they're usually about a minute. See if we got a schedule here for St. Louis Park coming up here in Benilde. I think we do. <laughs> this is Benilde's first game of the year, I believe. So, yeah, so they haven't played. S well, you know, that does explain a little bit, too. It's their first match of the year. They've been training all spring, and, you know, you're chomping to get out there, and you take the fact that they want to get the bad taste out of their mouth after losing a second final in the state tournament you know you want to get back out there right away so and uh, see how it works and it's working very well for Benil they look like mid-season form that is for sure and they're gonna face some tough competition coming up here Prior Lake is looming out there on May 4th Saturday right here at 3 o'clock that will be a great match, folks. If you are interested in lacrosse, come out and watch that one because those two teams are perennial powers in boys varsity lacrosse. As we get underway, St. Louis Park has possession in the Benilde zone, and this is their first uh, stable possession that I can remember if he can hold on to that ball, and he does. Getting costed there. Now he loses it without much provocation, and it goes out of bounds, and it turns it over to Benilde. And that's Seamus Foley with the long stick. Gets it up to number six for the Red Knights. Number six is Braxton Bogan, sophomore. And now the ball quickly into the Orioles zone. And now behind the net, that's Dowden with it. And he got it over to Stores. Now Stores and Dowden have changed positions on the offense. It's been Stores behind the net of the opponent, the Orioles. And now uh, they're gonna give Storrs some experience in the right slot over there, or the left side, and now he'll take it. Oh, no, fake, and a goal. I think he stuck it in from behind. He did a fake job there by Dowden, and I think that's goal number six, If I did, unless I didn't see that correctly. Yeah, or maybe he banked it off the goaltender's body on purpose. Let's see here. No, I guess it got blocked and it went in by accident. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> When it rains, it pours. So that was a pass intended for Stewers, and it just ricocheted off a random basket and went into the St. You know you're having a bad night if you're St. Louis Park when that happens, especially on top of all the goals that were uh, intentional. That was an unintentional shot and a goal, but it, nevertheless, it counts 16 nothing with 6.30 to go here, first half. And the face off and taken away there nicely by number 22, Jack Benuski's back in the starting role and he takes a shot this time. I've been waiting for that all match long. I thought, you know, he should get a little selfish after winning all those face offs. He should have a chance at glory scoring the goal and he'll run off after taking the shot. All right, back underway here. Benilde still with possession. Patty Burns is number four with it at the point. When I say the point, I mean at the top position there. There might be a more official name in the lacrosse world, but I don't know what it is. And there's a goal. Unassisted, number four, Patty Burns. Gets goal number 17. And that's not two touchdowns and a field goal, folks. Those are 17 individually scored goals, and we still have the better part of six minutes to go, period number two. We might be setting some sort of school record here tonight, if not a conference or a state record at the pace we're going. It'll be interesting to see what the final score is. All right, in the take the face off, Jack Benutsky once again See if he can get him a goal here. No, that's number seven this time with it. My fault, Drew Nylander. And now Shea Kenny Leonhart gets it to number 23. That is Siegel Horn. Now Dowden still manning behind the net duties on offense. Now to the far side, Stores. 
Number 12 is Leishow, and his shot goes just off and out of bounds, but Benil will retain possession. And that is Dowden. Gets it to Siegel Horn. Leishow. Now Dowden looking to move the ball so crisply gets blocked again. Last time that happened, it went in the net. That's exactly what happened, except this time it got through. So deflected there by the Orioles once again. And I think that's the guy with the, the Orioles with the long stick. He tries to put the defense on a nice job there thwarting stores. Allowed Hauser to make that save. And then we heard a whistle. As they're sorting it out out there, I'm trying to figure it out myself. All right, now Benil back in business, and there is a man down on one knee, so an advantage for Benil on the infraction. So now Benil with a man advantage and a 17 to nothing lead. Back on offense, and let's see, that is Dowden now. Moore back out in his familiar role in front of the net instead of behind it. Now oh, wide open, Burns, he had the whole side and he ran before he caught it. But they had left him alone there and he could have snuck right in point blank. But now he takes a shot and a goal as he took the hit. He looks at the referee with his, hey, what's that all about? But he gets the goal and takes a huge hit. Tough kid, Patty Burns. So there's Van Overbeck with it. Gets it into Burns, nice recognition. Burns takes the shot and in retaliation, he fires the shot and gets the goal. First goal tonight though for Patty Burns. Number 18 for Benilde as he comes off. Gets a nice little celebratory nudge there from a coach. 18 to nothing. Clock stopped at 4.35, back to the face-off circle, and this time it is Cooper Gay for the Red Knights, or is it number 20? Yes, Cooper Gay. And there was an infraction there, and for the Orioles that was taking the face-off was number 16, Levi Larson. But Benil now back on the offensive end, up 18 to nothing, looking for more. They've got their offense humming. That's Siegel Horn. Number 21 is Pepe Smith. Now Siegel Horn bounces it to Van Overbeck. As the sun now is almost completely down and the shadows have covering the whole field. Ball loose and it's picked up by still loose. Siegel Horn had a chance at it. Siegel Horn still trying to get it. Can't get it. And it's picked up by Van Overbeck as he quickly looks up to see if everybody's open across the front of the net. And he didn't find anyone, so he'll get it back up top to Logan Gelling. And now Dowden on the far side in the slot gets it back up top to Gelling. Now Siegel Horn loses it again. Picks it up though. No challenge. Loses it again. And he's got a hole in his basket he's pointing to and he drops it. And he's running off, so now an opportunity here for the Orioles as the ball bounces nicely just in front of number 12. That was Bernielsen, actually, Parker Bernielsen, and he couldn't get it, but now the Orioles do have it on offense. Number nine is Flynn Spano, and he gets a nice pass to Benson. Leo Benson, who scored some goals, now gets it to Bernielsen, and now we've got some offense for the Orioles, finally, at three minutes to go in the second quarter. It's great to see improvement and we are seeing some improvement here for the Orioles, showing a little semblance of offense. I think their goal now should just be possessing the ball. Don't worry about scoring. Let's just work on your passing on the perimeter against a very tough defense. And just work on catching and passing as Benson goes down and a nice little shovel pass. I don't know how else to call that, but that was very creative. Now back out on top, number 21, Justin Tomzak. And this is nice to see. These guys got an offense going. This is good. And spin move, Benson, who's not a bad player, and he tries to put in the middle of the cutting was Bernaldson, and he couldn't quite catch him. But nice idea as the Orioles come away with it again. So a nice prolonged offensive stint here. 
That's Tom Zach, and now on the near side, number nine, Flint Spano. Two minutes to go. They've actually possessed it in the offensive end for an entire minute. Now that's Bernildson. He had a hat trick on Tuesday night. He's going to try to score it, trying to get around, and he lost. Oh, that was a panic pass there if I ever saw one. Oh, that's unfortunate. Could have done a lot more as he runs off, and now Benil, they'll go chase it. Clock stop with the ball out of bounds at 1.47 to go in the half. If you're Benil, the game within the game, see if you can get to 20, I guess, by halftime would be a goal I would have if I were them. They scored three in the last 53 seconds of quarter number one. Really turning into a beautiful, crisp, chilly night, but not too cold. Probably a good night to be out there running around playing lacrosse. We've got a full moon coming up across the way, clearing skies. Really quite lovely out here. All right, Van Overbeck with it on the near side, and we're down to 118 to go. Behind the net to Kalen Storrs. Looks like they're going more into a run out the clock mode, but I don't think that's gonna last forever as Van Overbeck. It's hard not to want to score just like that. And that's 19 to nothing with 104. And there's your goal scorer. I've lost track. He might be up at four or five. And boy, from way out to 5'10", that's like 12 yards out. And Hauser just looks defeated back there. And they're going to go back to the face-off circle. Four to go, your score, that is not a mistake. It is 19 to nothing, and here comes Benitsky, and he takes a shot, and this time he took it with more authority as it sailed over the crossbar. Benitsky, if you're just joining us, is their ace face-off specialist, and he's been winning those unassisted and with possession, running right down the middle of the field all night long, and for the longest time, he'd pass it, and now the last two times he's taken shots of his own, and as I've been commenting, I think he's well-deserved of that with how many face-offs he's won that have led to goals. And especially up 19 to nothing, I don't think there's any threat they're going to lose this game tonight. And he could probably work on those skills because when they get into some tight games, having him come down the middle like that with some uh, experience and confidence in scoring could come in handy. So I would encourage him to keep doing that all night to learn how to score some goals coming down the middle. All right, Van Overbeck now. They are just sort of taking the time off the clock, showing a little bit of mercy finally. But I think someone's going to take a last shot, huh? Yeah, looks like Benutsky. One second. Nope, they're going to let it run out. And that's your end of the half. Your score, 19 to nothing from Benil St. Margaret's. Come on back for the second half. Say heads up, what does that mean to you? It means be aware, be alert. Be prepared to prevent something bad from happening, like a concussion. Most concussions are preventable if you make the effort. Wear a helmet when you bike, wear a seatbelt when you're in the car, and always be aware and be safe. To learn more, go to cdc.gov backslash concussion. You want to prevent a concussion? It's time to be heads up. Welcome back to Park TV 16 Sports on location. We are broadcasting Metro West Boys Lacrosse Varsity from the campus of Benilde St. Margaret's. I am Robert Christensen bringing you the color commentary and we are watching a route here tonight, folks, as we are just underway in quarter number three. Your score is 19 to nothing. The reigning state runner-up champs. Benilde St. Margaret's two years running is off to a great start in their first match of the year. And unfortunately, they're just, well, fortunately for them, unfortunately for the Orioles, they're just overmatched as we watch Benilde now look, putting on a clinic of textbook lacrosse here. Just watch the passing, the efficiency, uh, the form, and just around the horn, the ball goes. Just look at this, like a, like a clock wheel or something. 
They got a few spokes in the middle and they're gonna try to either dink it in the middle or they'll run it in or take a shot from far out, but they've been scoring in all those ways throughout the first half. We'll see if they let up on the gas here, but I doubt they will. These kids like to score just like that. Pass number 12, that's assisted from Jack Van Overbeck. Jackson Leishow gets the goal. Watch this nice pinpoint pass right there. And you know, what I liked about that pass was that he put it up high so the defender couldn't interrupt it and he could also shoot right from that position without having to bring the ball down or bring it up to get a shot angle. He took it right out of the air and shot it right from that point. Makes it really difficult for the defense to do anything about it. And now it is 20 to nothing here, folks. But we do have running time. It looks like a clock is still running. So usually I heard it's a 12 point differential and here we've got a 20 goal differential. And we'll keep an eye on to see if that was just a mistake by the clock or they're gonna do running time through uh, the rest of the match. And after that 20th goal, Benilde wins the faceoff, and there is a familiar sight, Jack Van Overbeck in the offensive end. And now back to Kalen Stewart, Matt Dowden, they got their starters in there in their normal starting positions. And they'll pass the ball around and decide whose turn it is to score. And my guess is they're gonna get a 21st goal here sooner rather than later, the way things have been going. And you know, the Orioles really not doing much on defense, which I think is a little disappointing. I would at least be out there trying to do something different. Play a little bit more man to man, get out there, try to get a little more physical, do something to interrupt Benilde. Instead of just doing the same thing, you see the Orioles are barely moving and just very, very slow. It might just be due to their inexperience and they are a very young team with having graduated a couple of their best star players. They've had a pretty good program over there the last several years, but it looks like they are very young and uh, need some nurturing, that's for sure. Benil being very deliberate now, just throwing the ball. I do think they are milking the clock here to some degree, which is nice to see. They really don't need to run up the score any more than they already have, but. As lopsided as these teams are, it's uh, hard to tell them not to score either. It's almost as disrespectful not to try to score as it is maybe to be argued disrespectful if you keep scoring. What are you supposed to do? So here they are. I think they're taking their time before anybody's taking a shot here. So I think that's their way of letting up but still being offensive. There's stores now behind the middle now to Dowden. And it, they are working on their passing skills and you can see how great they are at it. Very, not very often are they dropping it or misplaying it, like right there. Just beautiful. And they're just passing it around the horn. Yeah, so they're taking a different strategy here as we do have running time. I'm sure the Orioles have had enough coming into a holiday weekend. There's Dowden now just running around with it. That's Kalen Stores. He's a junior. Clock still running. So yes, we are in running time. They usually would stop it with that out of bounds play. Now back into offense right in the middle and nice stop there by Hauser. Inside, pushing around, ball loose. See who picks it up, Hauser, the goalie's back there, and he does trap it and takes it over. Nice job by Hauser. I'm a big fan of Noah Hauser. He's a tough kid. We've been broadcasting his games in goal for the last few years. He does like to come out and get involved in the offense, and he tries to do it there, and they need his leadership, quite frankly, from the goal. He's their senior guy, and he just tried to do a nice pass ahead to his teammate, and he just couldn't quite handle that pass, and now Benilde back on offense here. You wonder if this doesn't hurt a Benil team. They'd like to get tested. But for a first game, it's a good game just to work on your skills. And uh, But you don't want to get too complacent playing such a lopsided inferior team here. But they can only play the teams as they show up on the schedule. So they're going to do what they can here. And they're going to take that shot. And that ricochets away. I'm not sure if Hauser got a piece of it or if it went off the ground or the 
post, but let's see here. Taking the shot. Look at that. Bounces it, and I don't think Hauser got a piece of it. He just missed. Shot there taken by number 21 for Benil. That was Pepe Smith, of course. And there's a shot and a goal. Matt Dowden, I think that's goal number seven. We're close to it. Matt Dowden off to a great start this year. Seven goals. Clock still running. And here it is from point blank range. And the defender was sitting back there coming out way late for Benild. Number 19, Liam O'Gara, just a sophomore defender. So suffice to say the Orioles got a lot of work to do. We'll be doing some more of their games and looking for some improvement, I hope. Now Benil picks it up, and this time it's number 28. That is Tucker Turton, and he's actually touted as their best player in the uh, article in the Star Tribune last Friday as the long stick midfielder. Noted as one of the best in the state, actually, and he has not scored or done much or played much. That might have been on purpose, or I don't know if he's maybe slightly injured, but he's in the match now. Keep an eye on him. Tucker Turretin, T-U-R-R-I-T-T-I-N, senior defender. Twenty-one nothing. Four and a half minutes are thereabouts to go. Spin move by Shea Kinney Leonhart. Now over to Caleb Stores. Down and behind the net. They move a little faster, getting a little bit more aggressive. Nice pass up top to Leonhart. Spin move. Still has position of the ball. Now loses it. Picks it up again. Orioles playing a little more aggressive defense. Good to see them mixing it up a little bit. They then go back into their defensive shell. Shea Leonhart to. Michael Horn, and that shot by Stewart is way off the mark, wide right. Got a great camera angle, here it is. Horn right there, not even close. Kind of flew on him. Stores has several goals tonight as well. Missing on that attempt, he usually plays behind the net, but now Dowden is back there. Dowden, and was that Patty Burns, Van Overbeck? No, that was Patty Burns' shot. That is deflected, and with it is the St. Louis Park goaltender, Noah Hauser, and he comes out with it. Now gets it to the right side. His teammate number five, that is David Bryant. Bryant gets it ahead, nice pass by Bryant. And now on the move is Bernard Sen. He had three goals I've mentioned earlier. Let's see if the Orioles can get on the board. Boy, that would be a great victory just as they lose the ball. Didn't take much to knock it loose. Very frustrating for Orioles. And now the big shot. And he knocks him off the ball. Now he goes down. That's number 20. He looks hurt. No, he gets up. And they are bouncing around there. That was number 29, Riley Swanson. Lowering his shoulder, and now a whistle, and the ball will go to the Orioles, and they are on offense, and throwing it in is number 13. That's Jackson on the junior. Now Bernaldson with it. Parker Bernaldson, the junior midfield attacker, and now the Orioles look like they're in business. They look to be gaining a little more confidence on offense following late in the second half when they were able to possess it on the offensive end. But boy, just those basic passing. And now there's the first shot towards the goal, and it's stopped in front by number 30. The first shot he's faced comes with two minutes to go in the third quarter, and he makes the save. Goalie number 30, I believe, is Michael Lothenbach, the senior goaltender. And here's that shot by number 13 on, and the save with the basket by Lothenbach. Nice job. 21-0. There's a stoppage in play, but the clock is still running. 127 to go. Scoring is closed, slowed down considerably here in the third quarter. There was 11 or 12 goals in the first quarter, followed by, I think, nine for a 20 to nothing halftime lead. And Benilde has put up one here in the third. 
but they are being a little more mindful of the clock in their passing. They're gonna go for another one here with one minute to go, period number three. Shay Leonhardt fakes the shoulder, comes back, wheels around, Dowden now back to Storrs, back to Dowden. And his pass, a little miscommunication, Leonhardt went right, the pass went left, but back to pick it up is Patty Burns. That's with the D. Now Van over, back behind the net to Stewers. Out to Dowden, Dowden fakes the shot and his pass there intended for 22, Budnitsky. Loses control, but Patty Burns backs it up again. Benilt still with the possession. Let's see if they're gonna get a shot off here with 20 seconds to go. Clock running. My guess is they may try to take one shot, but at the end of the second quarter, there's a shot on goal, goes way wide, or may have been deflected in front. Six seconds, five seconds as they go get the ball. I think that's gonna do it here for quarter number three, and it is. Your score after three, 21 to nothing. Come back for quarter number four of running time. Vision loss is not something that you feel until it happens. Most people lose their vision from diseases like macular degeneration and glaucoma, not at birth. With macular degeneration, you lose your central vision. You have a blind spot right in the center of your face, so I can't actually see your face. So even that little circle in which I could see became a big blur. I was 65 when I first was diagnosed with glaucoma. There were no symptoms. I had no headaches. Three million Americans have glaucoma, and half don't even know it. 11 million people in the United States have macular degeneration. You lose mobility, independence, changes your entire life. So many eye disorders can be treated if caught early. My husband tells me that I have beautiful brown eyes, and I don't want to lose that. Make a plan today to get your eyes checked. Visit brightfocus.org to learn more. Okay, welcome back to Park TV 16 Sports. We are just beginning the fourth quarter here from Benilde St. Margaret's. That score is not an accident. It's 21 to nothing. And Benilde now going from left to right in white uniforms and St. Louis Park in their customary orange and dark. They started to show some prowess on offense there late in the third quarter. Had a first chance shot on goal, saved by Lothenbach, but nevertheless, St. Louis Park did show some improvement there on offense. But now we have Benilde, of course, back on offense. And that is Calum Stores. Now Dowden. And that is Gelling up top. Siegel Horn. So most of the main starters, if not all of them, are out there right now, are the main players. And that ball gets over Siegel Horn, and he can't hold it. And that is going to be an unforced air charge to Benilde. And St. Louis Park now going on offense. And here we go. Let's see if they can get something going. That is number 10 with it for St. Louis Park. Tony Stadler. And there's a whistle and a turnover to Benild. And 
And now Benil brings it in. That's Gelling. Gelling now over to the right side. Siegelhorn now, number 23 with it. Now behind the goal, that is Kalem Stores. Some enthusiastic fans still very much emotionally involved in this match, calling out the players, encouraging them on. There's a big shot and a goal this time again by Dowden. Or was that Gelling that got the goal? Number eight, no, that was Dowden. Yep, Matt Dowden, that's goal number eight. At least, it might be number nine. Here's the replay. Just a quick pass from Gelling and Dowden doing what he does. And you know, look how he gets that. His hand, arms extended and then he just whips it. <laughs> we don't have any uh, bat velocity, leaving the bat velocity stats here like they do in baseball these days, but the velocity on uh, Dowden's shot is positively neck breaking speed. I'll say that right now. And now we go back to the center circle. We have running time below nine minutes to go. 8.45 as a matter of fact. And the all important face off. And that is Gooper Gay. He's been won them all. I don't think St. Louis Park has won one face off all night. And he won that one. And now we got a whistle and a turnover. Not sure what the transgression was, but now St. Louis Park again on offense, trying to get a goal here to avoid the shutout. That is the game within the game here tonight now with eight minutes to go or thereabouts. And now St. Louis Park loses possession. Ball rolling across midfield. The chase for it picked up by Cooper Gay and he gets hit and he loses it. Ball loose and picked up by number five for St. Louis Park. That is David Bryant with the long stick. And now they have possession again. And now it's loose. Cooper Gay gets it for Benilde and now Dowden picks it up at the 15 yard line, brings it around the 10 and he'll cruise around behind the net and wait for his teammates to set up shop, and now he gets it to Siegelhorn. Back to Dowden behind the net. Seven minutes, 40 seconds to go in quarter number four. Patty Burns now to number 21 for Benil. 21 is Pepe Smith. One of these days I'll keep that memorized. Let's see, now there's Smith. Fakes the shot now to Siegelhorn. Now Smith. There's a Dowden behind the net and around the horn we go. Smith now takes the shot. And another shot attempt by Siegel Horn and he sails that wide and high. Hauser goes out of bounds. And now back in, ooh, Siegel Horn had a chance there. Now a shot and a bounce and it goes in. This time, Pepe Smith gets on the board for goal number 23. Time of the goal, 6.36, but clock still running. Six and a half to go now. 23 to nothing, and look at that bounce. And that bounce came from way out and just actually got in under the crossbar there. So many ways you can score on the bounce. I want to say bounce pass, but it really would be more accurate to say that it's a bounce shot. As opposed to basketball, you do a bounce pass. That's a bounce shot, no question about it. And they're hard to track when you're a goaltender, I think. Okay, back to the center circle. As we hit now six minutes to go. Quarter number four, face off one by number seven, Drew Nealander. And no matter who they put in there for the faceoff, Benil comes away with it, unless there's some sort of minor infraction. Now into the game now for Benil, number 31 with the ball. That's Kat Gabby Perez, a junior midfielder. Now Siegelhorn. And now Dowden. Up top, now Shea Leonhardt. Shea Leonhardt. Eagle Horn, now behind the net, Dowden. Shea Leonhardt fakes the shot, gets pushed, spins around. Now dumps it off, takes it right back, gets directed over to the right side. And Siegel Horn, they're crouching in there. And now 
behind the net. Matt Dowden, eight goals tonight, maybe nine. There's a shot and a goal again. Is it Shade Leonhardt? No, I think it was number three. That is Calum Stores. He has several already, and there's that shot, point blank range. 45 degree angle. 24 to nothing. Clock running, under four and a half minutes to go. Beautiful moon here tonight. Lighting up the sky. But if you're a St. Louis Park fan, that is a little consolation for what they are witnessing here tonight. It has just been a bloodletting at 24 to nothing. And now off the faceoff, that was Cooper Gay again, and he loses it, although he won the faceoff, and now we got a whistle just as St. Louis Park was rushing the ball across midfield. And they, and they turn it over. Now Benilde's back in business, and that is Siegel Horn. Less than four minutes to go. Ball behind the net. Now Siegel Horn back to Dowden. So boy, their main big knockers out there still playing and Shade Leonhardt gets a shot and misses. Not sure if Hauser got a piece of that on the goalie end. But Dowden goes and retrieves it. Now he has it to Siegel Horn. Now Shea Kenny Leonhardt, loves saying that name. One of the coolest names ever. Shea Kenny Leonhardt. Now Siegel Horn. Leonhardt now. Bounce pass. Didn't quite get it how he wanted to, but Caleb Stores handles it nicely, keeping the ball in front of him with his chest. Kind of like a baseball player on a ground ball. And he oh, nice shot there by and a save by Hauser, although I don't think he saw it. And now he doesn't see that one. On the second attempt, number 24, Henry Croft, the junior midfielder, gets on the board for the first time this season. And Shea Leonhardt, nice little pass there. And there's the shot, goes right by Hauser. Henry Croft gets the goal. Number 25. 2.25 to go. Back to the face-off circle in the middle. That's Kay Gooper going to take. There's a little bit of the skyline through the trees before the foliage shows up. Nice shot there to our camera crew and producer. Beautiful. Cooper Gay wins another one. Him, Nylander, and Budnitsky have won them all tonight. And the score reflects that. Oh, there's a boot kick with it. I'm not sure if that's legal. I don't think it is. They blew the whistle. I think Dowda tried to kick it there with his feet. So now St. Louis Park has a chance here to get on the board. They'd love nothing better than to get a goal here. It would make their night, I'll guarantee it. It'd be as if they won the game if they can get a goal tonight. Let's see if they can do it. Here they come, late in the game. Flying in there and, oh, he put a shot right in there. On the field for the Red Knights, number 20, Cooper Gay. 111 to go, and can St. Louis Park get on the board here? Everybody knows that's the game. Benilde wants the shutout, I'll guarantee it. Just as bad as St. Louis Park wants to score. So this is the game within the game right here, folks. Let's see if St. Louis Park can do something. That's number 29 with it, Riley Swanson for the Orioles. And he's gonna come back and they're gonna hold that ball and take one last shot here. They are tired of giving up goals. And there's Swanson, he puts the move on. He's on a mission. Can he make it? He gets turned away. There he gets to his teammate, number 21, Tom Zach. And the crowd senses what's going on here. Can they score? And now Benel takes it away to end that threat. Number 27 on defense, Riley Carlson, the sophomore. And Benil still has it now. We have 18 seconds to go. And St. Louis Park now has it. They got one last chance. Number nine, Spano with it on the far side. Spano still with it. Eight seconds to go. Spano needs to get there. He gets pushed down. And 
clock still running, Benilde's goalie has it, and that is your final whistle. And a round of applause from the home crowd. Benilde St. Margaret's takes their opener at home, 25 to nothing over St. Louis Park. For Paul Broden, our producer, our entire camera crew, I'm Robert Christensen. Thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again.